going to go into the first pillar or the first the first one, which is token policy. But before we go into token policy, I want to talk a little bit about monetary policy and give you some quick introduction to monetary policy 101. Why? Because in token policy, quite a big foundation comes from monetary policy. If you don't understand monetary policy, it's going to be quite difficult to to understand and then apply token policy in your project. So let's look at monetary policy. Just a quick run through. So in monetary policy, what is monetary policy? As I mentioned, it's how money how money is being governed and managed. How do we do that? We do that by changing supply. We can change supply through bonds, government bonds that I told you about. We call them open markets. So you can sell your, your bonds in open markets so people like citizens can buy. People like other current other countries, other governments can also buy them. And then you can also change the different interest rates. Because I told you there are many different types of interest rates. You've got interest rates between banks, um, between commercial banks, interest rates between central banks and commercial banks, interest rates between um, businesses, interest rates for like uh, B2B interest rates or B2C interest rates, many different types of interest rates. And these interest rates will affect behaviors of people. How how they spend the money, where they put their money. And this is all part of monetary policy because how money is being managed and governed, right? So this is something that um, we'll be talking a bit about. And why do we want to do that? Because as I mentioned, the, the market or the economy or people react accordingly. If the interest rate is very high, so so it's going to be very, interest rate is very high means the rent, is, the rent to borrow money is very, very high. That means if I borrow the amount of money, I have to pay back a lot more. Then I think, do I really want to spend the money because it's an opportunity cost? Maybe I don't want to spend the money now. Maybe I will use the money. Um, I don't want to borrow the money for now. Maybe I wanted to borrow the money to start my business, but now I look at something else, do my business in a different way. And then when interest rate comes down, then I will, I will borrow money and invest it into my, my business. So it changes people's behaviors. It changes people's plans. It changes how the market reacts. And that's, that's a very important aspect when we talk about managing money. So there are two types of monetary policy. You've got the expansionary policy and contractionary policy. So you can imagine, expansionary policy, where you expand, is where you want to put more money in the ecosystem. You want to put more money out there so that people be spending more. You want to entice people to, to um, spend more money and grow the ecosystem. Contractionary policy is the opposite, is where you want the, the ecosystem to contract to become smaller. And you can do that by um, burning money, by reducing the money supply in the market, by increasing interest rates, um, by reducing government bonds out there in the market, stuff like that. Gonna look at those tools later. But there are two types, basically. We've got expansionary and contractionary. Expansionary is where you want to stimulate the economy, and contractionary is where you want to reduce when you want to reduce the growth. So these are six typical tool, tools um, in the central bank's toolbox. So central banks are the one that manages um, monetary policy. Central bank is your big boss bank. And you've got six of these tools available. Usually they use them. So the first one is interest rates. Interest rates are, it's like, a, it's like this, um, it's not like a, I don't know what tool this is, but you can fix the economy with interest rates. So usually when, when the economy is growing too fast, or uh, yeah, when the economy is not growing enough, you want the economy to grow faster, and then you use the tool and you loosen it. You loosen your monetary policy, and you allow um you reduce your interest rates, and you allow people to spend more. You reduce your interest rates means your your rent to borrow money is lower. And it's cheaper to borrow money, and so people will borrow the money and invest it in somewhere else, and then you can grow the economy. That's interest rates. Required reserve. It's Remember I told you uh, money in the vault, money in the bank vault. So banks can also, uh, central banks can also play with that. So um, I think last week, the people, the central bank in China, People's Bank of China, told the commercial banks to reduce their required reserve. So that means now, now the banks put less RMB in the vault. So, and, and now they can take, Less RMB in a vault means I can take the extra out and start and start lending it out to people. So that's good. That, that means putting money into the economy and trying to stimulate the economy. So if you, you can imagine it's like a, a little screw screwdriver, and then you go into the vault, you open the vault with the screwdriver, and you take money out. 
So you can the money goes out and goes into the economy, and that helps you to uh, stimulate growth in the economy. Interbank lending is where interbank lending. I told you it's it's the 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 lending from like how banks lend each other money, and you can also reduce that. It's like uh, it's like a it's like a screw. Not really a screwdriver, but you can loosen it and allow allow um, more interbank lending and also reduce interest rates. So then it's easier for banks to borrow money and put money into the e economy and try to stimulate some growth. Inflation rate is where you can it's like a screw, and inflation rate is affected by all of these monetary policy policies. There are different types of, like you've got uh, supply side inflation and demand side inflation. We're not going to talk about that, but basically, inflation, um, one of the monetary policy um, mandates or one of the targets that they have is to reach a specific level of inflation. So, for monetary policy, we can affect all these like interest rates, um, credit reserves, and all this kind of stuff. But at, how do we know when to stop? Or how do we know when it's correct? How do we know when it's when is Good enough that we are achieving like what's a KPI? One of the KPI is usually inflation rate. So, um, a central bank be doing stuff like oh, we are targeting this year to hit two point three percent inflation rate, and then you have all of these tools available to achieve that inflation rate. And usually, inflation a small amount of inflation rate is good for the economy because it it uh, signals that the economy is growing, and that means it's it's not recession time; it's a boom period. So that's that's a, a tool that they have. It's like a little KPI to check against if the tools are working or not. Of course, there are also different types of inflation rate, but that's a different story. We have open market operations. So open market operations is where you have you allow other people to come come in by selling government bonds. So government, as I mentioned, government bonds is how government borrows money from people. And so the government has more money, and then they can use the money um, to put back into the economy. So that's open market. They buy, they buy um, bonds, and if they want to, con they're looking at contractionary policies. Then they can sell the bonds. And the last one is it's like it's just printing more money. It uh, this little bottle is like a a lubricant to make the whole economy a lot smoother. You print more money, it becomes uh, it causes inflation. But also, um, people feel that there's more money in the economy. People feel that it's it's um, a boom period. People spend more and helps to stimulate the economy. There's so these are the typical uh, monetary policy tools. You also have stuff like um, you have different school of thoughts when it comes to monetary policy. One of the new ones is called MMT, Modern Monetary Theory, and what they do is basically just print a lot of money, just keep printing money. Um, yeah, there are a lot of articles and debates going on, which can be quite interesting. Um, you can go and read them if you are interested. It's called MMT. And a lot of the Democrats are supporting that, just printing a lot of money. But one of the problems is that you have severe inflation because you keep printing money. But there are like a lot of debates going on. You can go and read more if you're interested. So how is this relevant to, to your tokens? How is this relevant to your token ecosystem? It's relevant because when we talk about monetary policy, there are two types. You've got independent and dependent. So for dependent, we have, it means that you are dependent on someone else, some other central bank to define your, your policy, some other, other central bank to manage the policy, and then you just follow because you're dependent, you just follow. Independent is where you set your own policies. You are your own big boss central bank, and you don't care what other people do, or you just take what other people do into consideration. But you don't really care so much. It doesn't affect very very significant amount of your monetary policy. So this is relevant to your tokens because some of the token, some of the tokens that are out there, are dependent on someone else's monetary policy. This is usually more of a fixed pack to to another asset or fixed interest rates. And so that will be stuff like you have USDC, USDT, you have Tether, or all these packed uh, stable coins or packed coins packed to one US dollar. And how how they usually work is that you have one US dollar, you give one US dollar into the bank, and then they give you one US dollar worth of tokens. So that's how 
it works, that's how the value is being defined. That also means that when US dollar increases in value, the token increases in value. If US dollar drops, the token also drops. The, the ecosystem itself, the ecosystem of USDT, USDC, and um, Tether, you can't really control your monetary policy because it's dependent on the central bank of, of US, the big boss bank in US, to determine that, and you just follow. So it's dependent, you just follow. Independent is all, all the way on the other side, where you get to control different things. You get to control your interest rates. You get to control your collateralized assets. Collateralized assets is where you, you need, um, you know how in central, I told you in central bank, or central, central bank and commercial banks, you put this required reserve, where you need to put some amount of money in the bank to prove your, your worth. So collateralized asset works kind of in the same way where you have to give money to the token ecosystem and then you can take, um, you can, from there, you can take native tokens out of it. So it's, it's like to prove that you have, you have asset in, you, you have asset and then you can leverage on that. So it's collateralized assets. So you can change that. You can change the, how the rate of minting and burning of native tokens. You can change the leverage on collateralized assets. So for, uh, required reserve is you can you have to do like 10% of the required reserve of the amount of money you borrow 10% of them have to be in as part of reserve whereas collateralized asset is that you give them this amount of money and you can you can take um, a percentage out of out of the collateralized asset maybe you can do a 10% leverage uh, a 10 times leverage on the asset you give or maybe you can only take um, you can borrow 50% out of the collateralized assets to, to mint native tokens. So these are just different ways that you can play with if you have independent monetary policy. Then we also talk about savings function. So this can be affected through interest rates. This can be affected through returns of assets. And when we talk about savings function, as I mentioned, let's say the returns of assets, which is the interest rate that you give to the collaterals, maybe it increases. So it becomes, um, more expensive and now you are looking now you have to think of the substitution effect if it's more expensive to to put my my asset in this ecosystem maybe i want to take my asset out and put it in a different ecosystem that gives me more returns in the short term so basically with with independent monetary policy there are a lot more things that you can play around with there are a lot more things that you can change you can affect you can you can design and you can you can engineer with dependent monetary policy it's a bit difficult because you you just have to follow the the pack um the pack currency that you, that is over there. So this is basically the the difference. And you have to think of how do you want to to deal with this? How do you want to deal with dependent or independent? How how does your token deal with monetary policy? Is your token packed to something so you don't have to think so much about monetary policy? Or is your token an independent token and you have to you can play around more a lot more with uh, independent monetary policy, which also means that the impact of change will be much greater and a lot more um, variables and, and outcomes that you have to you have to consider when designing the tokens and when designing the monetary policy of your tokens.